Hi folks, welcome back. In this video I'm going to be discussing the difference between pollarding and coppicing. So in my previous video on coppicing hazel, which I did some months ago, a viewer left a comment about pollarding and whether you should pollard or coppice. Anyway, so I thought it'd be worth just having a quick discussion on the differences and when you would do one or the other. And that's what the topic of this video will be about. So pollarding is very similar to coppicing. It's the same idea. You're taking out the leaders, um, taking off the terminal buds, and you're encouraging flushing from the stumps again. The only difference with the pollarding is that it's actually taken out at a higher point than coppicing. So coppicing is traditionally really close to the ground, and pollarding is at a certain height above the ground. So typically pollarding is around six foot um, above the ground, and there's a couple of reasons. One of the main ones for a commercial scenario is for reducing grazing stress on the regrowth so in an area where you have potential for sheep or deer or rabbits to you know graze on the new fresh buds that's an ideal scenario to consider pollarding another area where you often see pollarding most commonly these days because uh, pollarding in a commercial sense is actually out of fashion it's an old tradition although it is reviving but mostly you see it in town and amenity trees and you see it along sidewalks pavements they do a lot of pollarding of trees there and the main reason in that scenario is to keep it above head height for um, pedestrians and then they also keep it out of the reach of power lines etc so that's why you often see pollarded trees in town and that's the most common place you'd see it so in this example here it's a, it was a hazel that we coppiced and you can see there was quite a lot of vigorous growth came up from the stems now these were overstood hazel hadn't been coppiced for a long time but they still did flush back and you can see there's still some fresh buds coming ready for next year now the problem we had here this should have been sectioned off from sheep but sheep did manage to get in and if you take a close look at the leader of this stem you can see it was eaten off and pretty much every single one has been taken off so the terminal bud in every one of these shoots has been eaten so this would be a very good example of where pollarding would have been a, a consideration. Now, if we had known that sheep would have got in here, you know, then we would have needed to think about doing pollarding instead of the coppicing. But what might be a better solution in this scenario is actually we on a bit of a track is to pollard above sheep height and then let this grow over the track. And there would be a better solution here to be able to save these trees. So this is an, an older that we took this branch off a couple of years ago, in fact it might have been a year ago, and the reason we took this down, it would actually higher up, it had snapped out, so it was over the track, which is why we removed this particular branch, and we reduced it down, you can see the epicormic growth that has sprung up from the cambium layer, and that's how coppicing and pollarding actually function, so we didn't actually do this either for coppicing or pollarding purposes, but it's the same mechanism at work and in this case it's flushing back up pushing growth hormone into the tips to flush the shoots back out so here we have a very good example of a pollarded willow now the landowner planted these willows about 20 years ago and then they pollarded it about two to three years ago i think but it's a very good example of how the tree will flush back and produce all these fairly evenly sized stems. So that's one of the main reasons that people would have traditionally done coppicing and pollarding was really to produce a product they could use, things like basket weaving or um, hurdle making, etc. And it produces a fairly uniform product, so that's why they would have traditionally done it. So I think as I men mentioned previously, um, pollarding really is essentially the same process as coppicing. And the only real advantage is to get it above the height of grazing animals. But there are some disadvantages too, because once it gets at a certain height, working on this particular tree with tools, you're working at a higher level. So certainly if you have something like chainsaws or whatever tool you're using, you're working above shoulder height, which is never a great idea. So it does make management a little bit harder. But certainly in terms of the risk from grazing animals, it's often a good choice to do. Interestingly, in this section, from what I've been told, traditionally, maybe a hundred years ago, when all the coppicing crafts were flourishing, 
they actually used to come, um, the artisans used to come on a seasonal basis and would make clogs in this area. So I think they would make them from older, but possibly also willow, I'm not sure. But this is actually where they used to come each year and they would make wooden clogs. So that's quite a nice link to the traditional woodland management past. So I think in this case, I'm going to pollard this hazel and this is over the track and we'll get a bit of height. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean out all these additional, some of them are dead anyway, but I'm gonna clean out the smaller shoots and keep this as the main leader and pollard this one. So in this is instance, they're all quite small, so I'm just gonna stick with a pruning saw and that should be enough. This may not be the ideal scenario for pollarding because we have got a few other shoots which may re-sprout in a typical copper scenario but there is the risk that sheep will get in and graze on these so in order to try and save these stools and they're quite old you know we'll try this and see if it's it should sprout from this and produce a pollard from this height so there's always a risk with any management but you know you got to take account of the situation you're in and do the best you can. So I've done a nice clean cut. You don't really want a jagged one or any tears because that can bring an infection into the stem. So a nice clean cut. It is sloping down so water will run off and hopefully that's a nice good surface for new buds to emerge. Just uh, finishing off with a bit of snedding with my Rinaldi axe, which if you've seen some of my previous videos, um, you may have seen me talking about this. Really good little axe for, you know, forestry work, for pruning and for snedding or limbing. So I really highly recommend it. Okay, so that's the cleanup done. Um, and that's pretty much the job finished for today. So once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.